The end of the school year brings on major mom burnout. I know you know what I'm talking about. Summer break is in sight and moms are totally scraping for motivation to finish those last couple of weeks. Well, we're here to tell you, you got this. You can do it. Here to reinforce those facts, our Studio 5 Parenting contributor, Heather Johnson. You feeling it? I could. <laughs> you could be. How's that? You I got to practice what I preach. You could so be feeling it. We tend to think be of it. kids being <clears throat> burned out, right? They're sick of homework. They're sick of schedules. But moms definitely can absorb that end of school year vibe as well. Absolutely. We feel the burnout, right? Since August, we've essentially been doing the same thing every day. And there's never really a break big enough that lets us feel like we can recharge. I mean, it's Christmas true. is still busy and spring break is still something. And so we've been going and going and going and going. And I think what affects us the most is when we feel burnt out as moms different than kids kids tend to kind of quit we know we can't so we just forget we forget all the things that we know would be good for us yes. and good for yes. our family yes. and we forget mom burnout makes us forget so we're going to remember some stuff because it will help us you say we're going to remember to be a thermostat not a thermometer explain the difference yes so this is going to give us control back you know when you feel burnt out you feel like you're completely out of control you don't have control over your life what's going on your schedule is just out of control. It's all happening to you. It is, and you're tired of it. And so I, I was taught this analogy years ago, this space where we need to be a thermostat. Thermostats regulate the temperature. They choose it and set it and then regulate it. A thermometer simply adapts. It just reports what's going on. And so is, if as a mom, any time of year, not just the month of May when everything goes crazy, if we're simply just thermometers that let all the stress come in and just report that we're stressed and that our families are stressed, we're not regulating or setting any sort of temperature or tone. I love that. So we need to decide what we want our homes to feel like the next month. Do we want to be overwhelmed? Do we want to be overscheduled? Do we want to be so burnt out that we forget our goals and, and, and our motivations? Or do we want to set a temperature that works for us? But we're the programmers. We are the programmers. We set that temperature. You say if you're feeling that mom burnout, if the <clears throat> stress is piling on, you're starting to get that panicked, anxiety-driven feeling day to day, it's a great time to unplug. Unplug. It's the best. Christmas is another really good time to unplug. We, we tend to get burnt out, and so we fall to social media because there's so little effort and energy that has to go into it. Right? It, it kind of bides our time when we don't want to do something else. But we get on there and we see all this pressure about the perfect summer vacation and the perfect end of year party mm -hmm. and exactly how we're going to mm -hmm. all of these things. And so one, we feel really guilty if our world doesn't look that way sometimes. And then we also feel like we need to add more things to our list like, well, I wasn't going to throw an end of year party. Maybe I should be throwing it, an end of year party. It adds to the franticness. Absolutely. Yeah. And so unplug, unplug and take that energy and effort and put it into feeling less burnt out, loving your family, managing yourself. If you are feeling really tired, Heather, is there opportunity to <clears throat> loosen the routine or is now a time to really dig in on routine? So it's time to dig into the routine we know works for us. And that's back to the forgetting when we get burnt out and we forget everything. Yeah. When we start a school year, we start it with a really great routine in place most of the time. We're checking backpacks every day. We're packing lunches the night before. You know, we're on top of what each day is gonna look like. The more we get burnt out, the more we abandon the things we know to keep us sane. Routines provide that, and they provide predictability for our children. So this is not the time to abandon the routine that keeps things predictable. It's also not the time to abandon the things that we do for our own personal health mm. that keep us sane. Which brings us to this next idea, stay in the picture. Stay right there. We don't have to drop out of the picture. Just because there's some extra things to do for the next four weeks doesn't mean that we don't need that time for ourselves whether it's the gym in the morning, a walk with a friend, whether you read a book at lunch or take a bath at night, do those things. Still give yourself and stay in the picture. Give yourself those few minutes so you can recharge, so you can manage what May is going to look like. When I put myself in those moments of stress, you talk about how we kind of can easily slide <clears throat> into victim mode, right? Mm -hmm. This is happening to me, but is stress a choice? Absolutely. And it's funny, we don't love to put the word choice and stress in the same yeah, sentence. I don't love that. <laughs> we don't love that. None of us do. We don't like that. But the fact is, stress is 100% a choice. Remember, stress is a feeling. Feelings come from the way we perceive and what we tell ourselves. So if I tell myself I'm stressed and overwhelmed and can't handle it, well, I'm gonna feel stressed out. So this is not a time, nor is any time. Don't choose stress. Choose to see gratitude. Choose to see accomplishment. Choose to see a light at an end of a tunnel. Choose to see something different instead of stress and it will start to move that for us. Uh, I remember a couple years ago, we just had our sixth child and I remember sitting on the couch with her, going back to teach all the things coming together yes. and very clearly thinking, 
you're talking yourself out of a nervous breakdown right now, <laughs> right now. And sometimes I'll say that to myself where it's like, hey, talk yourself out of, out of this stress, this nervous yeah. breakdown a yeah. little. And the fact of the matter is I realized I can take all of this energy and I can put it towards being overwhelmed or I can actually put it into something that's gonna help me feel like I have control again. Well said. So, so don't choose the stress, choose to do the things that alleviate that as a feeling. We're focusing this parenting conversation mm -hmm. on parenting ourselves as parents, but you say part of that factor, part of that equation is recognizing kids are feeling at the end of their ropes too. Absolutely, and it's not just that they might be at the end of their ropes, it's us recognizing why we're doing any of this in the first place. And that's because we love our family, because we know there's good and right in what we're offering and what we're doing. We get burnt out when we lose our focus. So when our focus becomes the party and the this and the saying yes to all the things, we've completely lost focus of these sweet little people and a spouse or you know a, that live in the same space as us. Mm -hmm. So we gotta mm -hmm. put our attention and energy back to where it matters. And then we're not at odds with ourselves. Being at odds creates a burnout. And last but not least, stressful moments are a great time, you say, to bring in a little spontaneity. Be spontaneous. I like that. Absolutely. It feels counterintuitive to the moment, but why not? Well, and the thing is, not only does it feel good if we'll do it, but we have so much good research that proves we need the stability of the everyday. We need the routine. We also need the novelty and the spontaneity. We need both. And so we've got that routine. We've got that stability there. We got to add all the sweet stuff on top, all Love the it. fun and the excitement. Mix it up a little bit. Love it. Heather, thank you so much. Heather has a private practice where she helps and coaches families and couples. So we'll link you over to her contact information from our website.